You can't have a high-performing team if there is no trust. Though creating trust in a team can be quite challenging, especially in a completely remote setting. I'd like to share my experiences in building trust in a team to give you some practical tips and actionable advice you can follow. Hey, it's Daria here. Welcome. As I mentioned in the intro, today I'd like to talk about trust in teams. Most of us heard about this study conducted by Google that showed that the highest performing teams have one thing in common, psychological safety. What is it actually? But before I continue, I was looking into my YouTube stats and I've noticed that over 80% of you are not actually subscribed to the channel. That's crazy. So this is a quick reminder, if you like this kind of content and want to see more, click that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. I release one long video and several shorts a week. Don't miss those. Psychological safety. What is it? Psychological safety is a sense of confidence that the team will not embarrass, reject, or punish someone for speaking up. It's the belief that you won't be punished when you make a mistake. It describes a team climate characterized by interpersonal trust and mutual respect in which people are comfortable being themselves. For me, this all describes an environment of trust in a team overall. Now, now, let me clarify what kind of trust we are talking about here. And I'll quote Patrick Lencioni from my favorite talks of all time. We are not looking for a predictive trust where we work together for long enough that we know what to expect from each other. We want to create a vulnerability-based trust. This is the kind of trust environment where people are willing to show their weaknesses, ask for help, apologize, and admit mistakes. All in all, where people are not afraid to be vulnerable. This is the hardest kind of trust to create because it requires courage from every team member to take the first step. Once the step is taken, it requires the appropriate response from everyone on the team. Honestly, people don't really know always how to do that. The hard truth is that trust can be killed in a second. Trust can be easily destroyed in just one second. And once the trust has been broken, it takes a very long time to rebuild. Even if your team has been working together well for months or even years, one trust-breaking action can take them backwards to the very first stage of their team development. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I have this video where I explain the Tatman stages of group development. One of the easiest ways to kill trust is to withhold information. This can be represented in many ways. For example, when the real progress and status of work is not properly shown, or when someone disagrees with a decision and doesn't say anything, or maybe someone got offended by something said and done and didn't say anything. Or it might be about selectively giving information to only some people. And why I highlight this one here is because these actions might be seen in a positive way. You know, like uh, white lies. Oh, I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be a party pooper. Or I didn't want to offend someone's feelings. And that is why this is so dangerous. When it comes to vulnerability-based trust, white lies are a disease. And I'll talk a bit more about this in my tips on how to build trust. By the way, let's talk about those. So what do you do to build trust in a team? I have some tips and advice you can follow. However, it is not an exact science and I don't have a guide. You'll need to navigate your team dynamics and people personalities on your own to find the best approaches. But if you actually follow through with the steps I'll share, you will be able to create a better working environment in your team with foundations of trust. I don't know if you are aware, but I have a free email course that you can sign up for on my website. It's a great way to build new skills and help your team improve in just one week. Sounds interesting? I'll put the link down in the description for you to check it out. Now, let's get back to our trust building and the seven actions you can take to create the foundation for an environment of trust. One, start with yourself. As I said earlier, trust requires courage to take the first step. And if you are a scrum master or a leader in a team, you have to start with yourself if no one else is ready to do it yet. It means that you will have to put yourself out there, admit mistakes or weaknesses before you actually have trust in others. 
The way I like to do it is to be very upfront with the team about myself. I would say something like, I might not know everything about your work, so I'll be asking some questions that might seem stupid. Or, um, you are the expert in your work, so I'll have to rely on you to guide me. And if I made a mistake, I admit it. For example, I remember I promised to do something for a team and I completely forgot. So when the team came back, I wasn't trying to defend myself saying that I was extremely busy or something. I just said, I'm really sorry. I completely forgot. It's my bad. Let me fix this. Scary? Well, it's only the first step. Two, create transparency. There is no trust without transparency. And there is no transparency without trust. It's kind of a chicken and egg problem. You have to start somewhere, so start with transparency. The more information you can make available, the better. This relates to how the teams work and interact with each other, various processes, reporting lines, etc., etc. And of course, another important thing to make transparent is challenges. This is usually something that stays hidden or is only shared with specific people. Remember that thing I said about withholding information? Here's where it comes into play. Help your team document and communicate what is impeding their progress. This means being their voice in front of the executives, leaders, and other interested parties. That's on you. Three, set expectations. Okay, you might be getting tired of me talking about this, but it's an important part of building trust. What I mean is, of course, team working agreements. I don't want to dig too deep into this one since I talked about it many, many times in various videos, but just to give you a quick recap, if your team spends time upfront on discussing how they want to work together, it will make it easier to build trust since the right expectations have been set or at least voiced. Of course, as the team develops, some things will change. Having a baseline team working agreements is going to set the foundation for it. If you need help with creating working agreements for your team, I have a great guide and template for this in my store. It's a great workshop. I'm going to put the link in the description for you to check it out. Four, hold people accountable, including yourself. This one is a hard one, but it is absolutely necessary for building long-term trust. Remember earlier I talked about withholding information? Yeah, usually when it comes to holding others accountable, people tend to not say anything instead of saying anything because it might feel uncomfortable to speak up. This is where you should come in and it might mean that sometimes you have to play a bad cop, reminding the team about their commitments and their accountabilities. And of course, don't forget about holding yourself accountable for your own work. Maybe even ask your team to do it for you if they feel that you are dropping the ball. Five, focus on team goals. We are talking about building trust in a team, not with individuals. It means that we need to put enough focus on team goals. Due to how organizations usually function, the performance is always evaluated on the individual level and each person has their own goals to achieve. This, of course, leads to team members putting more effort into individual goals instead of the team goals, and that might create tension and distrust towards each other. Are others really thinking about the team or are they just thinking about themselves? You might not be able to change the whole HR structure of your company, but you need to build more focus around the team goals instead. For example, make sure that common goals are clear and visible and that the team understands how achieving team goals helps them achieve their individual ones. In addition, continuously coach your team on the concept of shared accountability. What it means is that if one person fails and this leads to the whole team failing, well, you personally fail as well, even if you have been successful in completing your own tasks. So everybody needs to keep tabs on the team success, not just their own individual success. Six, communicate on a daily basis especially if the team is working remotely. This really goes in alignment with transparency. I just wanted to highlight it as a separate bullet point as well in here. Think of having an old friend. If you haven't seen them or talked to them in five years, you might not have the same level of trust towards them, even if previously you were total BFFs. 
Except that in an organization, this kind of relationship deterioration happens much faster. Firstly, because you most likely won't be total BFFs with every single team member. And secondly, because there's also some complexities of work involved. Make sure that the whole team has regular touch points every day to sync up, you know, like daily scrums. Seven, be personal. And the last point I'd like to highlight is around building personal relationships. We spend so much time at work. Why not make it count? I talked about how you can use icebreakers and other team building activities to help with that in my previous videos. So I'm going to link them somewhere here in the description as well. So go check them out for more ideas. Don't you agree that it is much easier to build an environment of trust with people who we know personally? I surely see it that way whenever I am building new relationships with new people. And we are at the end of the video. To summarize, you can use these simple techniques to create foundation for trust in your team. One, start with yourself. You have to put trust in your team first before they can put trust in you and each other. Two, create transparency. Make sure that all of the information that is important for the team is available, visible, and understood. Three, set expectations. Do some team working agreements or any other activities that make sure everybody has the right expectations around every role and every team member, really. Four, hold people accountable and don't forget to hold yourself accountable as well. Five, focus on team goals. Remember, there is a difference between individual and team goals. So make sure everybody understands how team goals are as important as their individual ones, because if the team fails, they fail as well. Six, communicate on a daily basis, especially if you are working remotely, make sure there are regular touch points for the team to sync up. And seven, be personal. Think about how you can create personal relationships within the team, not just work. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, remember to subscribe, leave a like and comment down below. So what are some of the techniques and tools you use to create the environment of trust? Share in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and scrum on.